Tesla's new thermal management system for Model Y with Octavalve is trending on internet since Sandy Mundro has hinted about it. There are no details of it on internet. All that we know is for getting better range in cold weather, Tesla is using heat pumps so in certain conditions you can get up to 5 times more heat than the energy consumed without breaking the first law of thermodynamics obviously. Let's untangle the detail working of Tesla's new thermal management system. All the information in this video is sourced from Tesla's patent for this system. This 57 pages long patent has very little to say about Octavalve. Undoubtedly, Octavalve is a great device, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. The whole system is way more complex and interesting. Let's start by the Octavalve itself. Octavalve is made of two four-way valves stacked upon each other. So this is a simple four-way valve. And this is Octavalve, with one four-way valve on one level and other on the other. Both are controlled by single coaxially mounted motor. There is one more modification in this system, that is the ninth pipe configuration, working as bypass to the radiator. It fits like this. Both pipes are shrinked in size and two pipes fit in place of one opening, side by side. This ninth pipe adds all the magic and it's the only reason why Octavalve has four positioning stepper motor. These are the four positions Octavalve does. This new thermal management system has 12 heating modes and 3 cooling modes. There are few more modes possible with this system, but only 15 are implemented in the car. You can see the 4 positions of Octavalve cannot execute 15 modes of thermal management. That's why I said Octavalve is just tip of iceberg, because there are many other things that control the system. It takes a lot of effort to make such content and do animations for it. By putting it on YouTube, it's nowhere near the profitability as selling reports. So make sure you support us by subscribing the channel and sharing the video, and keep us motivated by your likes and comments, then only we can keep bringing such content in future. Here are the few basic things of physics and engineering you should know to understand the thermal management system. Number 1. Anything above minus 273 degrees Celsius means 0 degrees Kelvin has heat energy in it. So even liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius has heat energy in it. Means you can say it's warm when compared to something colder than it, like liquid helium at minus 269 degrees Celsius. So if I pour liquid nitrogen in big bowl and put a smaller bowl on it, in which I will put liquid helium, the liquid helium will get vaporized as its temperature will rise due to the relatively warm liquid nitrogen. Number two. If two things at different temperature are allowed to exchange heat, then the colder thing will absorb the heat and get a bit warmer and the other thing which is giving out heat will become a bit colder. Third, working of the heat pump. It's the same system used in AC and refrigerator. The compressor compresses the refrigerant which makes the refrigerant hot. Then this hot refrigerant's heat is rejected into atmosphere in condenser. Then this normal temperature refrigerant is expanded in evaporator where it further cools down and absorbs the heat, ultimately cooling the stuff. Then it goes back into the compressor for next cycle. This is how it's fitted in room as ACs and this is how it's fitted in refrigerators for cooling the stuff. The last thing you should know is the basic heat flow calculation. I will explain it with simple example of refrigerator. We put electrical energy in the heat pump system and as its name, it pumps heat. So it will absorb the heat from inside and pump it outside. That's how the cabin gets cooled as internal heat is absorbed and that's why the walls of refrigerator get hot due to the same heat coming out. Now what happens to the electrical energy you put in? That also comes out in the form of heat energy. So heating outside is equal to cooling effect inside means the heat absorbed inside and thrown outside plus energy used to operate the system, that is the energy you put in the compressor. So if you leave the refrigerator store open and the supply is on, then this much will get cancelled out and the room will ultimately get heated, equal to the power consumed via supply. 
Now let's get to the thermal management system. This is the new thermal management system of Tesla. This is the octavalve. These are the coolant loops shown with this line. These are refrigerant lines shown with dotted lines. This is the compressor. This is the accumulator which stores the refrigerant. This is the cabin condenser. It is same as outdoor unit of AC but fitted inside the cabin to give heat to the cabin. This is the cabin evaporator. It's like indoor unit of AC to cool the cabin. This is the chiller. Same as in earlier thermal management system of Tesla with super bottle. It's the heat exchanger where cold refrigerant in the cubes exchange heat with the coolant, cooling the coolant. This is LCC, means liquid cooled condenser. It is also a type of heat exchanger where hot refrigerant exchanges heat with the coolant, ultimately heating the coolant. So the condensers are for heating the air and coolant, and chiller and evaporator are for cooling the coolant and cabin. This is the battery and this is the loop flowing through it for cooling and heating it. This is PCS and drive unit. Now let's get started with the different modes. The first condition, atmospheric temperature is above minus 10 degrees Celsius and the cabin needs heating. Now the first heating mode is activated. It is the most efficient heating mode where the heat pump absorbs the heat from the atmosphere and puts it in the cabin. Here how it works. In the chiller, atmospheric temperature cooler enter. The chilled refrigerant absorbs its heat and as the coolant gives it, it becomes cooler than its earlier temperature. That is, cooler than the atmospheric temperature. Now this cool coolant goes to LCC, which is inactive. Then it further goes to radiator as the bypass is blocked. In the radiator, the coolant being cooler than the atmosphere absorbs the heat from the atmosphere and then goes back to the chiller for the next cycle. Now let's see the refrigerant flow. The refrigerant which has absorbed the heat from the coolant now goes to the compressor where due to compressing it gets quite hot. Now it goes to the cabin condenser where it heats the cabin. The heating effect equals to the energy put in compressor plus the heat absorbed in the chiller which is sourced from the atmospheric air. Now as in cabin condenser the refrigerant gives heat, the refrigerant itself cools down which further goes to the chiller where after expansion it chills down to even lower temperature. So now this chilled refrigerant can absorb the heat from the coolant which is at relatively higher temperature. For slow and continuous heating of battery, the drivetrain and battery is kept in loop where the drivetrain gives its heat to the battery. The second condition, where the atmosphere is below minus 10 degrees Celsius, cabin requires heating and the battery and drive unit has some extra heat which can be used for heating the cabin. In such condition, the first mode can't work as the coolant is at atmospheric temperature which is lower than minus 10 degrees Celsius and the refrigerant in the chiller can only chill to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So it won't be able to absorb heat from even lower temperature coolant. So for heating, the excess heat from the drive unit and battery is absorbed and is given to the cabin. For that, the octavalve position is changed like this. Similar to first mode, the compressor compresses the refrigerant and sends it to the cabin condenser where it heats the cabin. As the battery and drive unit are limited source of heat and it will generate heat as it continues to work, so only some amount of heat can be fetched out at a time. That's why some amount of refrigerant goes to chiller to absorb the heat while the remaining goes to the cabin evaporator where it cools the cabin, cancelling out some of the effect of heating. Here's how the cycle works. The compressor compresses the refrigerant and sends it to the cabin condenser where it heats the cabin. Then some amount of refrigerant goes to the cabin evaporator where it absorbs back some amount of heat added. So the net effect is heating but slightly lower than the first mode. The remaining refrigerant goes to the chiller where it cools down after expansion and absorbs heat from the warmer coolant and goes to the compressor for next cycle to put the absorbed heat of the coolant in the cabin. The cooled coolant in the chiller goes to the batteries where it absorbs the heat from the batteries, then it goes to the drive unit to absorb even more heat, then it goes to the chiller to give that heat to the refrigerant so that it can further heat the cabin. As in second mode, the heating is slow because the batteries and drive unit are limited source of energy, plus there is thermal recirculation via evaporator which also slows down the heating effect. Hence, it is used to maintain the temperature and heat up only when the cabin temperature is not much lower than required. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. And to get notified for the next part, make sure you subscribe the channel and hit the notification bell. See you on the other side. Thank you for watching.